Hey guys, welcome back to Cody Tarot. I'm your tarot reader, Cody. So for today's pick a card, we are going to be doing a reading about your future spouse. So who you will be marrying in the future, or if it's not, if you don't think, you don't have to think about your future spouse, just think of the love of your life, who you're going to spend most of your life with. I'm just going to call them future spouse for this reading. But if you don't plan on getting married or something like that, then um, this is just going to be the person you're going to be spending the most of the time with in your life that you, you know, cherish and love very deeply. But today's reading is going to be how you can meet them sooner. We're going to be focusing on, so basically if you've been manifesting them or just simply hoping to meet them soon and you're like, how can I make it work quicker, faster? How can I put myself in a position where I can meet them, you know, sooner than later? We're going to be discussing that right now. So today we'll be covering who your future spouse is, uh, blocks or delays, uh, why they are not coming in, how to fix those blocks or delays, and also um, about what you were doing right or correct to meet them, uh, or correctly, what you guys are doing correctly. And um, also one special card for your power move. So with all of that, we're just gonna be focusing on basically like everything from what's not working to what's working basically, and then something to focus on so you can like uh, charge up your battery, so to speak, as far as like your engine and trying to get to them. So without further ado, here are the crystals. We have group one with the blue lace agate. Group two with the sunstone iolite. Group three with the prenite. And group four with the rose quartz. Take all the time you need to pick your crystal. You can pause the video here if you need to. I am very excited to get into this reading because um, I'm all about improvement and satisfaction. <laughs> so uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into the reading. Um, oh yeah, pause the video here if you need to, but without further ado, let's get into the reading starting with group number one, the um, blue lace agate. Hey, group one, this is if you picked the um, blue lace agate. Such a cool stone. Nice patterns in that particular stone. Um, okay, so let's see. Let's start off with a card for who your future spouse is. Okay. We have crow spirit. And then we will do a card for your power move. Bring love into the situation. And your tarot cards are going to be covering the blocks, how to fix them, and what you're doing right. Okay, that goes right there. Okay, let me make sure all of this stuff is in the camera. All right, looks good. Tilt that like that. Okay. Hold on, my neighbor is like sawing, buzz sawing something. So I'm going to take a quick moment to see if that's interrupting the video and we'll come back to this spread in just a second. Okay, I don't think you can hear the the saw that's um, buzzing around outside. So let's get into the reading. So flip over these cards here. This is going to be um, what is blocking what is blocking your future spouse from coming in. This is going to be how to fix it. This over here is going to be what you're doing right. Okay, let's get into your reading. So first of all, with co Crow Spirit, Co-Create with Spirit, your future spouse is going to be a very spiritual person. Um, with Co-Create with Spirit, this, this person could be a creator, as in um, 
like a content creator or also with co-create with spirit i'm definitely seeing there like could be a building type it's interesting i had to pause the video for like a buzz saw outside because my neighbor's working but this person could actually be very into creation like creating things with like tools or paints or canvas like this person's definitely very much a creative type of person um and co-create with spirit basically just means that they kind of have this back and forth with um, spirit and the universe. And basically, they have a way of kind of like throwing ideas back and forth to create things. And creating things doesn't necessarily mean that it could be like has to be like a uh, like them, them, you know, making like a doghouse or something or them making a mailbox out of like tools and supplies or maybe them creating a picture or a painting. Co-creating could be anything where they like you know, go for the idea, look for the idea of the prospect and then pull it back into the practical realm and like build it from there. And that could be in the creation of like a story, for example, like going and doing research and characters and then pulling it back and creating the story or writing the story. So they could be like an author or something like that. But the creation is a big part of their life. The idea, the act of creating and the idea of creating. So they could be an artist, craftsman, or like an author or a storyteller or something like that. It could even be like a songwriter or a singer. Um, it's anything where they are co-creating and they have like a spiritual side to themselves as well. Crows also, interestingly enough, about your future spouse, they're very like mystical, mystical creatures. Um, the thing I like about crows is that um, they have no need to hide. Like if you think of other birds or other animals or other creatures that roam around in the daytime, right, that are, how do I put this, like hawks or whatever, um, they have like a brown, like, top to them you know so there's a there's a there's an element of camouflage in their environment and crows because they're solid black it's basically the color that stands out the most from the environment like you can always see or spot a crow very very easily so this person is definitely the type of person who probably doesn't blend into a crowd too easily they're probably a more unique person but at the same time they are like bold and brave in that regard and that they can really stand apart from people and the differences of their environment and kind of make a bold statement. Crows also travel in, I think they're called murders, uh, but they're like basically a pack of crows or a peck of crows. Um, and they like to travel in packs of like six to 12. So your person might feel good in small groups of like other creative, like-minded creative individuals. So that's a little bit about your future spouse. Now let's get into why they are not in your life right now. What is the manifestation blocks or what are the blocks that are coming in the way? With Nine of Cups in reverse and Five of Pentacles upright, there's a strong double message here of a sense of gratitude. It's basically, these cards are saying that like, basically there is a sense that you've been feeling kind of down on your luck. Like you haven't been thinking, um, you haven't been thinking that you're, you feel like your life is, um, you're as, as grateful as your life as you could be, basically. Basically, this is just saying that, like, the little rewards and things that come along the way that kind of, like, make life worth living or make you feel like you want to, like, continue moving forward or that make you feel, like, happy or fulfilled, those little kind of breakthroughs, you're not really receiving them right now. And part of that is because you have to kind of look in, and with this block, it's like you're, you're, they're guiding you to like look in and work with kind of like seeing those things. Now, this is going to get more into how you're seeing those things and the little mechanism for that, because you're probably thinking like, okay, well, I've tried to see those things. I've tried to be grateful, or maybe you've watched YouTube videos on it already about gratitude and stuff. But really, this is basically just saying there's some kind of block with gratitude. So it might be the fact that you've also tried to be gracious or that you've tried to kind of like have gratitude for your life and to be thankful for all the things in your life, but it's just not working out for you. Somehow there's still a block. You're still not attracting different things. And so we're going to get into the solution right over here. Part of this comes from the idea of quick results, right? Eight of Wands reverse is just basically saying that these, these ideas of like quick paced kind of results, like wanting something and getting it, that's not really the thing, the lesson that the universe is trying to like bestow upon you. There's not going to be a time where you're having, like you think of one thing and then you get it really quickly. I mean, even if those, th those moments happen, the thing is there's what the universe is basically asking you to shift your perspective to. It's not about being gracious or gratitude for the things that do happen quickly. It's about being, um, having gratitude for the things that happen in a very long term or a very long timeline. Um, Interestingly enough, with Knight of Pentacles reverse, this is indicating a sense of reliability. This is indicating, but it's in reverse, right? So it's indicating that the universe seems unreliable to you. And it's almost 
um, better to view the universe that way because I'm seeing that the universe is trying to get you to accept spontaneous things that are coming towards you. That's kind of like the lesson that's being trying being to being learned right here before this person can come in. And that makes sense that that would be the lesson you have to learn because your person accepts spontaneous things from the universe all the time. They're constantly in the flow of like receiving something from the universe and sending something back to the universe and kind of in that creation process. So it basically makes sense that they want the universe or what is kind of like the undoing or the unblocking of this is that it's going to be Focusing on the fact that like anything could happen really at any any time, you know, but at the same time, these things that happen, these these things that you can be gracious for are coming in in long durations. It might help also to look back at the things that um you that if you've tried to make a gratitude list and you can't really think of things, it's probably because you're thinking too short term. This is trying to get you to look in a very more long term perspective. Knight of Pentacles is also about that long term, but it, specifically here in reverse is talking about the reliability of the consistency of what the universe brings in. So it's almost like you feel like when you wish for something or you want something to happen, it's like it doesn't happen or something goes wrong or something like that. And you feel like down your luck, like I can't even trust this thing called the universe to bring me these things because, and that's probably why you're going to end up with this person is because I think one of your life lessons or your path is to like start to trust the universe or things that are thrown your way by the universe because your soulmate, um, or sorry, your future spouse is um, basically, they they have that connection with the universe and you're supposed to learn how to get that connection. Um, with Five of Pentacles, I also see here that she is kind of shut out in the cold with this door. She's kind of like, kind of, I don't know how to explain it. She's kind of like shut out and there's like the door and she could enter this room, right? But at the same time, like if you look over here at this Knight of Pentacles, he's walking in this field kind of like fully, let me turn it up right for you guys. He's walking this field outdoors, breathing in the fresh air. There's also an element that like getting some fresh air and getting in tune with the natural world around you is really gonna be beneficial, is really gonna help you. Yeah, there's definitely some signs that it's like acceptance of the unpredictability of the universe and the fact that the universe kind of delivers things slowly. So it's interesting. This is all about manifesting your soulmate faster. And I'm seeing that that, would, that will happen. Um, if you kind of take the time to, to look at the universe as kind of like a mechanism that doesn't necessarily deliver things right exactly when you want them. There is a sense that the universe is unreliable and an acceptance of that fact. It's interesting. It's kind of like a paradox because specifically with this reading, we're talking about how you can bring this person in quicker or how you can get them, bring this person into your life sooner. And um, the thing here is it's like an acceptance almost of the fact that that, that is, that's not going to happen. And then you will receive kind of like the blessings along the way. And the more the blessings, it's almost like also the time will speed up. So for example, with the gratitude thing, as soon as you unblock this ability to like see the gratitude in things and you start to really feel gracious for the things in your life, you start to like really feel like, okay, this came in and that's wonderful. Or this came in and that's wonderful. And I'm really grateful for that. And this has really helped me with that. And that's really amazing. When you start thinking along those lines, what we, what we see here is that time will kind of go by faster. So it's interesting. It's almost like it's in, yeah, especially right here with this, un, this, this kind of like unreliability. Cause if you think of the Knight of Pentacles, it's a very reliable person, kind of like always there, always fulfilling their obligations, um, always working hard to create a better future. Um, there is this element that the universe is almost like kind of wants you to acknowledge that it's unpredictable, that things are unpredictable, that it can't be planned out, that even your manifestations can't be planned out. They can't be thought ahead, you know? Um, and the thing is, is when you're looking at what makes you grateful, it's almost like accepting the spontaneity of things and accepting the gratitude of that is what's going to really unblock this whole thing right here. Okay, let's get into what you're doing right, because that is that can part um, probably seemed a little bit confusing to you. But at the same time, like, um, it should make sense in the sense that like, you want to take the, t take your time with the universe, let know that things are going to come to you a little more slowly and that it's not as reliable as you thought. It's almost like saying that you have to kind of go out and make your own luck, but also accepting spontaneous things that come your way. So this is basically like roll with the punches. That's kind of like, and your person does that a lot too with crow spirit, co-create with spirit. They're kind of, they accept things from the universe and they, they bring it back. So one of the main things is that kind of back and flow with the universe. And I see right here that it's kind of blocked. 
Um, and it kind of all stems from the fact that like the symptom is basically that you, that you don't feel kind of like grateful for things in your life. Or like, if you're feeling like bitter or resentful by certain things, it's because that you're, it's because you're not accepting the natural flow of the universal paths around you. So it's kind of like when you adapt more to your environment and the world around you and kind of like take in more of that information from your environment, it will infuse you with more gratitude. And that gratitude is what's going to be that kind of like beacon that attracts your soul, your, your future spouse to you, future spouse soulmate to you. Okay, so let's get into what you are doing right. So first of all, there is a cool thing here with the two of wands where if you look at this woman, she is sitting in a house and she has the world by her and a picture of a car, a picture of a car and a, a surfboard right there. And she's kind of like looking out and dreaming. She's dreaming of like all the adventures she could go on. Now that's good. What, I'm, what we're trying to say here is not necessarily that you shouldn't manifest anything new or different and kind of only be a slave to the whims of the universe. What we're seeing here is that it's actually a good thing that you're thinking about ideas and things that you want to do with your future partner. I'm definitely seeing that like planning things, going on trips, going on activities, doing things, and kind of dreaming of those activities and letting that out there, that's going to be really important because even though the universe is kind of unreliable and doesn't send things right off the bat or immediately, these this dreaming is good to kind of fuel that connection that you're kind of like looking for with all of this with seven of pentacles this is interesting this is talking about um the fact that like if you look at this guy and um he has this plant right the thing is he's he's taking his time with this plant he can really like see and care for this plant because it's something that's really grown and he gets tangible and he can see it in the reverse this is just showing that like you really take your time with things that are like that you can actually see and that once they finally do come into your reality, you actually take your time with them. You kind of can see them for what they are and nurture them and help them grow. That's also facilitating right here with bring love into the situation, new moon in Aquarius. This is kind of like your power move where you want to... Um, Always kind of like have a loving attitude towards everyone and everything in your life. That's kind of like what's also going to attract your person to you faster. Any kind of like animosity or hate, and that kind of goes with the gratitude over here. Um, any kind of like animosity or hatred towards people, you want to kind of diffuse that. The more you can get yourself to a super loving position, a super loving state, um, that's really going to attract your person. And that's kind of the power move right here. And that also ties in with the two of wands right here, the dreaming. You can think of your dreaming for new things and new desires and new activities. That same part of your brain that kind of fantasizes about those things is going to be connected into your faculties for creating love and bringing love into the situation. Also with this seven of pentacles, this is also with this kind of, it's also almost like a nurturing card right here with the seven of pentacles. And in the reverse, I'm just saying that it's almost like if you look at this tree upside down, it's almost like saying that the, the more important part is the roots of the of the plant, not necessarily the plant itself, even though when you can see it and you know it's growing, you know it's there, but it's almost like where did that plant come from? That's really going to also help unlock some things in your your gratitude, basically, by looking at where things came from and where they kind of like where what were the roots of those things like looking back in time like i mentioned a longer term perspective it's not about the short kind of like quick quick get it and and take it and leave it you know it's it's kind of like about looking at a longer term perspective like what has been what has been happening throughout your life that has created the point you are today that's going to be a really good um benchmark for kind of creating that gratitude list that you're looking for also, that love in that situation, that's very paramount. So all of these things are really going to tie in together as things that you're already doing correctly to kind of manifest your person. It's interesting with new moon in Aquarius and just the fact that it's an Aquarius card and it's an air sign. I'm definitely seeing that like some, some of these things with bringing love into the situation, it could also be dealing with the fact that you need to bring thoughts and ideas into the situation that are loving ideas and inspired ideas. So for example, with this dreaming card, how this is coming from your mind and the planning and the foresight kind of of like what you want to accomplish in your life, let those dreams and ideas, don't feel free to share those with people because I feel like people are really going to respond to that and respond to that, especially if they come from a place of love. It's really going to amplify your environment to grow it tenfold. Back with the seven of pentacles, the growth in the seven of pentacles, it's really going to help this kind of like amplification of your environment to grow, um, 
And I definitely see that that's going to also help you feel more gratitude as far as, as far as what's blocking it. So basically on the most simplest scale, what's blocking you is basically, um, is basically kind of almost like a lacking mindset or a lack of gratitude. Um, and then also what we see here with the Eight of Wands and the Knight of Pentacles, what is going to unblock it is knowing that the universe is a little unpredictable, a little unreliable, and letting yourself take some time to really absorb the things in your environment and realize that the things in the past, looking at the roots of the situation, the things of the past could kind of, they also took time for them to manifest. So instead of just looking at the plant, what's on the surface, what you have, it's a gratitude about where it comes from. So even if you kind of made a, a gratitude list, and that's why I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you may have tried to make gratitude lists. You may have tried to do the gratitude thing. It just doesn't feel like the right thing because you're just focusing on the plant, right? Well, you've got to focus on the roots. You've got to focus on where it comes from, the timeline of everything, looking at things from point A to point Z and seeing where those growth points are. Yeah. So if you like the reading, um, you can like or comment below. If you really like the reading, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I post pick a cards like this once every one to two weeks. With that said, we're going to move on to group two with the Sunstone Iolite. Hey, group two. This is if you picked the um, Sunstone Iolite. Kind of a cool stone. Got that orange and that purple in there. A little bit of sunstone, a little bit of eyelight, a little bit of sacral, a little bit of third eye. <laughs> so, okay, so let's get into your reading. This is going to represent your future spouse or your soulmate. I kept getting confused saying future spouse and soulmate, but I basically just want to reiterate that this person is going to be basically the person who um, you spend the rest of your life with, kind of like the love of your life and what how they are represented. And this is your power move. We have adjustments are required. And then we're going to pull out the stuff for the blocks and what you're doing right and how to unblock the blocks. I'm going to do one quick shuffle here. sure all of this is looking good. All right, let's see what you guys got. So for your blocks, we've got Page of Sword and the Sun Reversed. For the solution to the blocks, we have the High Priestess in Reverse and the King of Wands. And for your, um, for what you're doing right already, we have the emperor in reverse and the moon upright. Ah, uh, okay. So this is quite an interesting reading. Um, there's a few things here we need to discuss, um, but let's get into it. So first of all, your soulmate, peacock spirit, let it shine. Um, this is the type of person who really can shine the light on kind of like, um, like it says, right, it says it right here. Um, let it shine, let it shine. Yeah. This person kind of can shine the light on areas that are a little murky or clouded and kind of see the truth of the situation. Right. Um, yeah. Think of like, this person is like having a great a big third eye and think of all these little peacock eyes as like third eyes like this person that you're kind of like going to meet is i want to say is incredibly psychic but also with their heart chakra they also have this ability to shine light using their heart chakra as well so it's almost like a third eye heart chakra combination this person your soulmate is going to be very attractive peacocks are considered very beautiful in the animal kingdom so this person is going to be very very attractive this peacock is also wearing a crown on its head so you can think of this person as a very like has a very royal kind of like intelligent nature um but let's let's see what else about them yeah, I'm just also seeing the colors of the peacock. We have the blue and the green. So this is definitely a third eye heart chakra type person. 
Yeah, their ability to shine light on subjects. I'm going to make more of a point of that when we get over here talking about the moon card. But um, until then, that's basically what we're going to talk about with your soulmate. We'll get into more of the blocks and stuff, and I might go back to them a little bit later. Okay, so your first main block here is we see that it, this is not really like a block, but like a state of being. We see that you're very... Um, intelligent like you're a very intelligent person and that's a really good thing but at the same time what we're seeing here is that it's taking you like with this this woman and she's like walking this fine lot like this fine wire on this tightrope and reading this book and holding she's kind of like multitasking and stuff but she's lost in the book she's not so much focused on her external environment you know she's kind of she's kind of relying on these little idea balloons to kind of like hold her up so as long as she has her thoughts and her ideas in her mind, she's she's uplifted. She's 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 you know she she won't fall into this cliff right here. I don't know if you can see that. She won't fall down on this ledge because she's can tiptoe on this so easily because she has those balloons up. You would think that this is a strength, but what we're seeing here is that this is also can be a weakness. The fact that like what's blocking you is your own kind of intelligence, and we see this here with the Sun card in reverse is the fact that like. There is a sense of like a, a mild depression that you're going through or that like kind of blocks out this person that there might be certain times where you're like feeling happy, feeling normal, feeling fine. And then all of a sudden this kind of sadness hits you out of nowhere and it kind of like makes you feel like it's slowing the brakes on kind of like your life and the things going on in it. Yeah, what I'm seeing here is it's it's. The thing is, is with the Page of Swords, this is a very kind of like dreamy person who's not really like ready for, I don't see this person right now as ready for emergencies. And with the birds kind of flying around her head, it's, she's a very like in the clouds type of mentality. But at the same time, um, she's like very focused on studying and learning and building something through book knowledge, basically. What we're seeing here with the High Priestess in reverse and the King of Wands upright, there is this element to how you unblock these things or how you remove these blocks. Not saying that your innate intelligence is a bad thing. I think it's actually a really good thing. I think you should hold on to it. And this is in no way saying you should not hold on to it. But this is basically saying that there's some areas that you're studying that you're kind of like beating your head against, basically. Like you're studying them a little too much or you're kind of like intellectualizing the process to death and that specifically we're talking about your intuition right now what's going on with your intuition is there's almost like you're so focused on it or you're so like how do I put this there's an element of like focusing on your intuition to the exclusion of all else and also the fact that like of building your intuition like constantly trying to learn what we see with the page of swords is a very like learning card and kind of researching and learning and what we see here with the high priestess is it's important to drop the kind of learning mechanisms of your intuition because the king of wands here the king of wands is a card way more about much more about action he's an action taker and he's always ready that's the thing i notice about the king of wands is it's not so much the action or the confrontation that he enjoys it's the fact that he's always ready for something to happen he's always prepared and in order to be prepared you have to be kind of vigilant you have to be kind of aware and so with the high priestess and kind of being re in researching too much and kind of like researching how to build this intuition you're actually pulling yourself away from your intuition because it's almost like you're intellectualizing the process too much and kind of what we want is to get you back in your body because when you get more body focused rather than mind and head focused that's where you're going to start to attract your soulmate that's where they're going to kind of come into play it makes sense because you're an intellectual you want to get the jump on things on an intellectual and an intellectual sphere but what this is just telling you the king of wands is you want to poise yourself and be ready for different opportunities and things coming into your life it's not that you're actually it's it's the thing is it's like it's it's not recommended here for you to foresee opportunities and try to see what's going to happen ahead of time. It's a, it's about being in a state of readiness and being ready for something to happen. Kind of like being on guard and kind of like looking at your environment and being kind of like um, ready for any kind of different emergency or thing that could go wrong or anything. And not necessarily just emergencies or things that could go wrong, but like anything, opportunities. So it's instead of like having your intuition lead you to the next thing, it's about being ready to accept things and adapt to those at the same time. We see already you're, you're somewhat good at this um, with adjustments are required. This is your power move, but it's also 
a move that you should emphasize a little bit more. Adjustments are required is just saying that in certain situations, you might have to make adjustments. Like you might have a research battle plan or a vision of the future with the high priestess, the intuition or the research. And then maybe reality is just not quite as you expected. And so you need to make adjustments, little adjustments here and there. And this King of Wands is just basically saying, be ready for those adjust adjustments. It's about anticipation and being ready for what comes at you, what's being thrown at you. Um, it's not about really preparing, just being in a state kind of almost in the present moment and being in kind of like the current present reality and just being ready to act in, at a given moment's notice. With the Emperor Reverse right here, these are the two things you're doing correctly right now that is going to like help attract your person. We see here with the Emperor Reverse that you don't put a structure to your life, that you don't put kind of like a like a rigid schedule or routine on your, your life or any kind of rules or boundaries on your life. You kind of keep it more open-ended and, and flowing. That's a really good thing. In no ways with this readiness are we suggesting that you kind of root, like structure and routinize your life. It's just about being in the state of being ready for things to happen happen. And in, in a way, with the Emperor card and being like so spontaneous and not really having a detailed plan of how things go, it's actually going to help you in the long run with this readiness thing to just accept things as they come. With the Moon card, this is where it ties back into Peacock Spirit, your, your, um, your future spouse or soulmate, who you spend the rest of your life with. Um, with the Moon card, um, this is all about illusions, not knowing what's going to happen, that there's always going to be things that are kind of blocking you from your awareness of what's knowing what's going on. This is also not only in relation to your environment, but in relation to you. And this is actually a very good thing. This is saying that you actually are camouflaging yourself from outside people who are trying to look in. If you think of this high priestess card... Think of other people who have like a really keen intuition, a really keen insight, but maybe don't have your best interests at heart, right? There might be a really intelligent, perceptive person, but they don't really see, they don't really, um, how do I put this? They just don't have your best interests at heart. And so with the moon card right here, this is shrouding those from those people. So basically you're creating this illusionary veil that is protecting you from these people coming in to kind of take away kind of like your sense of stability. So what you're doing really, what you're doing really wonder, wonderfully is keeping this sense of mystery about you, keeping this sense of like, um, keeping almost a sense of like a hidden nature, kind of like this idea of, um, not revealing everything so readily or so easily. It's kind of like you're kind of shrouded in mystery. And that's kind of one thing that's going to be really good for this peacock spirit because when they meet you with their let it shine, this, if you look at these two cards, this moon card is all about illusions and stuff. And let it shine is all about um, with this light. It's a shining the light on things that are unknown or hidden. So just like some of the people you're protecting yourself from, your person is going to be very perceptive of you. They're going to see almost right through you. And that could be a little unnerving at first, but at the same time, it's almost like there's a sense of trust. So there's, instead of having like a person who basically kind of like just trying to figure you out, it's, it's interesting. A lot of people are going to be trying to figure you out, right? The way you're going to know it's your, your future spouse or your soulmate is the fact that this person is going to just see through you clearly. They'll be able to say things to you and you'll be like, whoa. Like I said with the third eyes and the heart chakra, they have a very loving and caring energy. They're not going to hurt you. They don't have any ill intent like some of these people who are trying to um, kind of like see through you and get to behind your illusions, illusionary veils to like see who the real you is and almost like kind of take advantage of that. This person's not going to take advantage of that. They have a very pure heart chakra and their third eye is impeccable. They'll be able to see into certain secrets of your soul that you almost, you wouldn't have like, sh like shared otherwise, basically. And they do it in a loving and caring way. It's not going to hurt in, in the least bit. It's, it's, it's basically they're shining that light on certain areas that really need help um, with you and kind of clearing that, that vibe out. Yeah, and with adjustments are required, this just talks about more about this King of Wands energy. And this is kind of like your power move. It's just be prepared to make adjustments. No matter how much you research or make a plan ahead of time, with adjustments are required, this is just saying that you're always going to need to be, when especially going into new territories or new opportunities or new areas of life or new projects, you're always going to have to have a state of readiness. Also be ready and receptive to like, it's about being in a state of receptiveness as well and being ready to react to your environment. So for example... If you're in like a um, going to pick up a coffee at your local coffee shop or something and you go in and you think like you have a battle plan, you say, OK, I'm going to get today I'm going to get a um, 
you know, uh, a latte. And that takes, um, <laughs> that's like, you know, almond milk. And um, I want almond milk in my latte. And I want, I'm, I'm literally, this is what I order at coffee shops, just window to my life. Um, but say you go into a coffee shop, you want like a decaf latte with almond milk, right? And the thing is, is like they're out of almond milk, right? With, this is just on a smaller scale, but if you're in a state of readiness, you're, instead of thinking what you want so far ahead, you're ready to adapt. Adjustments are required, it just means that this is gonna be a give and take process where you're gonna have to adapt to your environment because with this illusions, with, with these illusions of like how you're protecting yourself, also people can't see your motives or your intent or what you're trying to accomplish. So you always have to be on a reactive state of mind to be prepared for anything that's getting thrown at you. It's almost like you don't want to plan too far ahead what's going to happen, what's going to be involved in the next thing or the next plan or anything like that, because there's a state of a, there's like an illusionary veil between you and the world. The interesting thing about your person, when you meet them, this peacock spirit person, they pierce that veil they pierce that those illusions right and it's interesting with peacocks you can think of them also as like masters of illusion because they have their own kind of like array of like a distraction for predators so they so they go away but this also is a person who can like see through those illusions and that's going to be really good for you in the long run because you're going to have to make less of those adjustments but I'm definitely seeing that like with adjustments are required, this is what's going to attract your person more because this is almost like a lesson you have to learn that the universe is trying to like give you. It's basically saying that like, if you can make these adjustments, if you can be reactive and prepared for pretty much anything and not get too in your head about things, there is this element that like things will be easier for you and come to you more easily. That's also going to help with this sun card. It's going to make this card more upright and positive by the fact that like you're not going to be disappointed by things going wrong. Basically, you're going to have that kind of like positivity because you're not focused too much on planning or foresight and you're more focused on the, your reactiveness or your readiness to situations. Yeah, let's see if I see anything else here. Yeah, the interesting thing about you and your future spouse with the moon card here and the peacock spirit is you're both kind of like masters of illusion. So where you have this kind of illusionary veil around you and you create mystery around you, your spouse is also going to be like that. Don't think just because it says let it shine and they're all about shining the light of truth on everything that... Um, that they can't create illusion as well. Like I said, they can blend their feathers out and create kind of like a defensive mechanism for predators or anyone that has like any antagonistic um, ideas or like thoughts about you. So basically this person's really gonna help you kind of like mitigate all that illusion and stuff. They kind of blend in with you into your illusionary world and you guys get to share this kind of like perfect private world and you kind of know when and um, how to like give give and take certain things with each other in your environment to create that kind of perfect balance and harmony, to create that happiness that you're looking for. You won't have to overanalyze as much, I'm definitely saying, even though you're gonna want to like do this, because I see this as a part of your character is just like thinking a lot and thinking of ideas and maybe reading more books and researching and stuff. I'm definitely seeing that this is a part of you. And so it shouldn't be like forgotten, but it is something that is blocking you a little bit in the fact that you're over intellectualizing some of your intuitive faculties you know, it's almost about being in the real world versus the dream world. That's kind of what is kind of being like uh, shown to you in this reading and kind of like what's going to help is like knowing how to adapt in the real world. Very cool. All right. So uh, if you like the reading, you can like or comment below. If you really like this reading, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I post picket cards like this once every one to two weeks. With that said, we're going to move on to group three with the pre-night. Hey, group three, this is if you chose the um, pre-night stone. So this is going to be your um, reading about your love of your life, future spouse, soulmate, whoever you're spending the most time with in this lifetime. And um, we're going to be getting a card about them. We're going to draw that first. We have whale spirit trust the great mystery and then this is going to be kind of like your your power move as far as like bringing this person in or meeting them sooner a fiery climax approaches
and we're going to pull some tarot cards for um, what's blocking them from coming in or from you meeting them and then how to unblock that and then what you're doing that's already working. Interesting. I just saw the world card on the bottom of the deck and I also have fiery climax approaches. So there's a sense of like completion that's coming through. Um, or like almost being completed. So there might be an aspect where you're maybe close to meeting your soulmate or like on the brink of meeting your soulmate or future spouse. Okay, let's get into it. Let's flip over your cards. Group one got a lot of these cards too. That's interesting. They're showing up differently in your reading. Okay, so let's get into your reading. So first of all, your person with whale spirit, trust the great mystery. The thing about whales is they're very majestic creatures and they're very large. So your person might be a very large person. They might be very um, tall or bigger in stature, or maybe they're very buff or something. Um, or maybe they just have kind of like large features or large, like, I don't know how to explain it. I'm getting something very physical with them and the fact that they're very like, um, there's a lot of them. Um, yeah, there's something along those lines that they're very like, they're also very like slow moving, but they're very like, uh, I don't know how to explain it. They're very like, um, like larger than life, I guess you could say, but in kind of like a physical sense as well. With Trust the Great Mystery, this is the type of person who kind of has like a lot of trust in the mysterious. They also, they also are the type of person who anything that is like not seen or understood correctly, um, this is the type of person that kind of like wants to know more about it. Anything that's like mysterious, they like trust those things in their life. They trust mysterious things in their life. They trust things that don't make a lot of sense. They trust the vague, the inexplainable, the kind of like, um, so for example, if you're the type of person who kind of like doesn't make sense to people some of the time, this person's going to be a really good person for you because they're really going to trust in almost everything you say, even though if they can't understand it, whatever's mysterious to them is what really attracts them. Okay, something I'm seeing here with the Two of Wands and the Five of Pentacles. With the Two of Wands and the Five of Pentacles, we have this dichotomy and the fact that they're both reversed, we have one person who is shut outside of a house can't get in, and one person who is stuck inside and can't get out. So with this being reversed, it's almost like there's an element with this kind of like what's blocking your kind of this like person from coming in is it's almost like you, you feel uncomfortable out of your house and you feel uncomfortable in your house. It's like you can't really get comfortable wherever you go. And so we're, what we're trying to do is get you into that state of comfort so this person can come into your life more easily. Um, on one hand, you're either at home and you're dreaming about things but not taking action. On the other hand, you're out in the world kind of like seeing how bleak everything is and how there's like nothing is like nothing is good enough for you, basically. And it's kind of like you want to just kind of go back inside where everything's like lovely and nice again. But then when you're inside, there's no action. There's nothing happening. And so you go back outside and then there's, but then there's still, this is like a, it's like a, you know, a crappy world awaits, <laughs> you know? So what we're trying to get you with the Empress and the Seven of Pentacles, this is kind of like your saving grace here. So with the Empress and the Seven of Pentacles, the Empress specifically talks about beauty and seeing the beauty and specifically with the with the world card as her stomach, it's about seeing the beauty of the entire world. Uh, one way to develop this, seeing the beauty in things with the moon card, and if you, I don't know if you noticed, but there's like a full moon up here and then down here there's the earth. Going outside at night or going to different places at night, even just driving your car around at night and seeing everything like light up and different things like that and being in like really cool magical places at night, obviously be safe about it. Don't go any, anywhere any, like crazy at night, <laughs> you know, but being out at night is going to really like bring up that kind of like beautiful way of like seeing things again and you're going to kind of like stimulate your creativity. At the same time, with the Seven of Pentacles, what's really recommended is looking at things close up, tiny little insignificant things that you may not have noticed before. 
If you notice the original Seven of Pentacles, the guy on the traditional tarot card, he's a little bored. He sees all the things he's made and he kind of looks dissatisfied. Well, this guy looks intensely focused on caring for this little plant, right? So there's an element of like caretaking for your environment and nurturing your environment, but also focusing on the small things. What are the little things in life that are beautiful? What are the tiny little things that are beautiful? Um, and then how do those things create the whole world? How are there? How is there an inner web between those things, those tiny little things that create the overarching beauty of the entire world kind of seeing things as a whole picture a whole complete view of everything is really important here it's interesting with the fiery climax approaches i'm definitely seeing that kind of like this this is kind of like indicating that your person is going to come in soon or this is indicating the fact that like the anticipation of thinking they're coming in soon is something that's going to be really good for you guys um and kind of like a fiery climax approach is just thinking about the next big thing or the next big climactic thing in your life or planning those climactic moments are really going to be beneficial. With um, Queen of Swords here, this is also about a perspective, like a bigger perspective about things. And this is what's really working for you. This is things that are already working for you. And this is kind of goes in hand with the Empress card here. Even though these cards are about seeing beauty and interconnecting the elements of beauty and the smallest things to larger scopes, you might even want to make like a little um, map of like different things that you um, kind of see that are beautiful. So for example, if you see one thing that's beautiful at a specific area, write that down and see another thing that you think is beautiful in another area, write that down. And then kind of like create like a grid of those things and kind of think like, well, how far away is that thing from that thing? And then how far away is that thing from that thing? And you're gonna start to see a pattern of beauty in the world that's gonna kind of create this kind of overarching like interesting pattern of basically like how you view beautiful things and how those beautiful things interrelate with other beautiful things. I think as this pattern grows, you'll start to see more and more dots to connect. And it's gonna fill in the whole picture in a bigger picture in more of an abstract sense. So basically what I was trying to say with the Queen of Pentacles, Queen of, sorry, Queen of Swords, is that there is this element of like having this higher perspective. If you look at this woman, she's up in the mountains or she's up in the sky where there's like flags blowing in the wind and stuff, but she has a pensive look on her face. You know, her short, her sword is kind of sheathed and put down and she's kind of pondering things. She's pondering the existence of everything and the, what she's learned and what she's, so having these moments of like thinking about things and letting your mind wander and pondering these things, specifically in a place that's high above elevation for everyone, from everyone else, kind of like wherever you can go that's in higher elevation or kind of like altitude, if you can even take a trip to the mountains and like sit in the forest and the mountains and like think of different things. If you don't have a place of like high elevation, this is just saying that being in the open air is really gonna help you. Being in the open air and pondering different things in your life, letting your mind wander in the open air is really gonna be beneficial for you when it comes to manifesting this person. Another thing that you have going really well for you right now is not expecting a family unit or not having any expectations about like your what your family unit's going to look like. Kind of keeping it open ended because I'm seeing here that with trust the great mystery what this person likes and interestingly enough what you kind of are the thing that's like that brings you guys together actually is the fact that like everything kind of unfolds in a very mysterious way that you kind of can't predict things or know how something's going to happen with the 10 of cups here. It basically represents that you don't have a plan for your family life. You don't have a plan for the happiness of your family or the future of your family or what you're, you want your family to look like and not having that plan, keeping it kind of open ended in that regard. Or, and even if you don't plan on having a family, um, just basically just being with another person, not having like a big plan on like what that relationship looks like or what that connection looks like is going to leave it really open ended for the natural way it, it's going to form and the foundation for that to really create itself. I think that's it. This was a pretty quick reading, actually. I think it's a little shorter than the rest of them, but still important nonetheless. If you came to this reading and you found it helpful, you can uh, like or comment below. If you really found this reading helpful, you can subscribe to my channel. I post pick cards like this once every one to two weeks. With that said, we're going to move on to group four with the Rose Quartz. Hey, group four. This is if you picked the um, Rose Quartz here. Rose Quartz is such an amazing stone. I recently used it and it was a good time. <laughs> okay, so let's get into your reading. Um, we're gonna pick um, 
This is for your future spouse or soulmate or whoever the love of your life is. We have Canary Spirits, sing your own song. And then we have over here, we have the power move. We have don't let pride get in your way. And we're going to pull some cards for this group and see what's blocking you, what needs to be unblocked, and what's working for you. Okay, we're going to put this for what's working and see what needs to be. What's the block? blocks and also we'll go from the bottom of the deck here and then what is working for you okay hopefully you guys can see all of that okay let's get into your reading let's flip over your cards we have six of swords and death rebirth in reverse and then judgment in reverse and king of swords upright okay so for canary spirit this is your person um your future spouse or soulmate whoever you're going to spend the rest of your life with they have we have canary spirit sing your own song so this person actually is interesting interestingly enough um this is a person who's very social can really get along with a lot of groups like birds who are very social and they always kind of like are singing to each other and kind of like communicating with each other. With Sing Your Own Song, this is a person who's very social and like adapts to a lot of groups but has their own unique voice. They have their own unique things they say. They have their own unique perspective. Um, but at the same time, they're so, so, they're so socially savvy. They can blend really well with other people. Um, they can talk their way through any situation. They're just very, very social and good at what they do, basically. Um, they're, they also might have like a melodic voice, very like clever melodic voice. Um, with the crown here, we have a little bit of a royalty aspect. So this person might be, might have a little bit of a nice idea about themselves that they're kind of like meant for the nice, the nicer things in life. Um, yeah, and with this flute here, the fact that they're sitting and perched on a flute, like flute music might be very important to this person. And with the musical notes coming out here, this person might be like very focused on like listening to certain musicians. Um, certain like types of music is very important to this person and kind of like having that element of like musicality in their life, whether they're listening to music or making music or kind of like going to concerts or shows or kind of just like maybe singing songs throughout their day. This might be the type of person that as they're like going through their day, they sing little songs under their breath and kind of like constantly kind of like humming a different tune or humming some kind of thing that they're singing. So this is the person coming in for you. Now let's see what is blocking them from coming in. So right here we have this, I, the, first of all with the Canary Spirit, this person has this like golden yellow color, right? So they have this kind of like beautiful golden kind of color to them. Um, and it contrasts very interestingly with the blocks right here with the six of swords and the death rebirth card we have here with these two cards is the fact that, um, the six of swords is all about like transitions that are kind of like, it's like a mournful transition or kind of like a regretful transition. Like you don't necessarily want to make the transition, but you're forced to make it. And death rebirth card, like in reverse, is kind of about like not being able to let go or not being able to like change the past. Like if you think about death, it's interesting. If you think about death, it's something that is going to be like, with the death card upright, it, it, it's it's almost like a clean break, right? Like it's like, okay, one chapter's out, the next chapter's in. And that's that's all there is to it. And it can feel refreshing. It can You can be mourning it, but it's kind of like the, the tie is severed immediately. With it being in reverse, it's about not severing these ties immediately or 
in the most effective way possible. So you may have gone through a few transitions in your life where you had to move on from one thing to another. Maybe you've gone through a few painful breakups or maybe you've had to move from one city to another city and you kind of didn't create the correct severing of the ties. Like maybe you didn't tell some of your friends in one city that you were leaving and you ended up telling them you were moving when you already left. Or maybe there was a breakup and you kind of like let the you let the relationship drag on a little bit too long and then you kind of made the break, you know, when it maybe was too late. And this is all this is nothing like against your personality or anything like this. It's just basically saying that it's a, it's a, almost tough for you to know when to move on and when not to move on. And it's almost these regretful transitions, these kind of like in, in a way, like sorrowful transitions is really what's blocking this person from coming in. Being able to transition more effectively in your life from one thing to the next is going to really help your person come in because it's going to kind of clean the slate. It's going to keep this kind of clean, clear slate. Like if you look at this golden color of this bird, I'm seeing kind of a very cleansing kind of energy with this bird, this canary singing your own song. So this person, this the fact that you can like get up and move and leave those situations is really going to be beneficial. Either you're going to be moving out of a situation you're in now and getting up and leaving and your soulmate or your future spouse will be in the next one. And you can even think of it that way. You can think of this canary with the gold golden color is like a, a, a pot of gold and you're kind of like a treasure hunter. If you don't find it in one area of your life, you might have to look in another area to get it, you know? Um, with here, with the king of cups and the lovers, this is kind of the solution to this, blo this blocked energy. So with king of cups and the lovers, the lovers reverse just indicates that not getting into any serious relationships because if, if it's almost like if you know it's difficult to disentangle yourself from a relationship, then um, it's better to not get involved on a more serious level, especially if it's like, if it gets messy and complicated and you find that you fall out of love, you know, or you find that you like, that you need to make that transition. I feel like at this point in your life, you've realized that a lot of these transitions you kind of have to make um, throughout your life and that you've had to make throughout your life. And they were kind of like, difficult to make. They're kind of hard to make. Moving from one area to another was difficult. But at the same time, this lover's card just indicates you don't want to get too tied down too deeply with someone who's not exactly perfect for you or not exactly right for you. The lover's upright represents being fully revealed and revealing yourself to your partner. Basically, the fact that you can be totally open and connected and have everything out on the table. This is, the card is basically saying that if you cannot do that, it's better to not like set down those roots because it's going to make the transition a little sticky to get out of. With King of Cups here, we have an interesting thing. If you look at this card, you'll notice how he is calm and content and how his eyes are closed and he's at peace. He's put his hand in this little bowl and he's focused on that. But if you notice over here, the ship sailing away, He's literally letting things sail away from him. Instead of him having to move away from them, he views it differently. It's not that you're in the boat sailing away, you know? It's not that you're like that. It's that the other person or the other party or the other situation is sailing away from you. And that's kind of the perspective you have to take. Because on one hand, when you feel like you're moving away from something else, it feels like you're the one that has to leave. Really, that's not the case. It's other people leaving out of your life. Even if you are the one moving to different towns or even if you initiate the breakup or you initiate the effect that you're gonna move out of that situation, it's really about other things moving away from you. You can think of yourself as kind of like a calm being centered in this kind of like world of like the chaotic ocean and things, the ocean currents are all around you and they're kind of blowing things into your path and blowing things away. And the thing is, it's like, if you think about this on a more like, uh, I guess metaphorical level, things in the ocean that you're looking at, like if you look at, notice this King of Cups guy, he's looking at this bowl and he's looking at this, um, starfish and, um, the other fish, <laughs> the other fish in there. Um, the thing is with the, these situations is you're looking at things that are in the water that are blowing in the flow of the water. The thing about your soulmate or your future spouse is they're a bird. They can fly. This type of person, even if they do leave, they'll come back. That's the thing is that's one of the cool things about them is that they have the ability to come back. Sometimes with the tides and the currents of the ocean, things that are floating on by you don't ever come back. It's like they kind of float on by and the, the ocean kind of current like controls what's going on. 
So that's what it's basically saying is remain kind of unattached. That's going to be the best way to like make the next move forward or to attract your future spouse is to remain kind of unattached. Getting these messy situations and getting too attached is what's causing you to make these transitions where they're one foot in, one foot out, you know, not really leaving, but you are leaving that kind of thing and remaining kind of unattached. So you can leave if you need to, or you can stay if you want to, but it's not really so much about if you want to leave or stay, it's about the things that these things coming into your life and going out of your life. And the fact that if you remain unattached or you remain more unattached than you have been, there is an element that you can let these things go in and pass out easily and effortlessly. You won't need to feel these, these depressed emotions about these transitions because you'll let things come in and go pretty easily and you'll be able to enjoy them for what they are. Um, kind of just like a brief moment passing in the stream of life that's kind of floating on by. And this is not to say that your person, like I mentioned with your forever person, this is a person that's going to stick with you forever. Because they're a bird, they have the ability to fly away, but they'll always come back. This person is someone who's going to be in your life for a very long time. So don't even worry about some of these other people because you will find that consistency. You will find that kind of ability to um, retain things in your life. You will find attachment, but the universe is trying to have you practice this non-attachment right now um, in order to kind of like get away from these kind of more negative emotions or these kind of being one foot in, one foot out. It's going to create a little bit more decisiveness in you as well is what I see. With don't let your pride get in your way and the judgment card reversed, there is this element that with don't let pride get in your way and judgment in reverse, there's an idea of wanting to make things work that are not necessarily working. With the judgment card in reverse, it's all about um, kind of like things having like not the correct, people really not having the right judgment of you and you not having the right judgment of them. But with the pride getting in your way, it's about trying to make those work um, even when they're not working. So don't let pride get in the way is really about like, taking away your ego and basically saying like, okay, if this is not working, it's just not working. There's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing anyone can do about it. This is just how it is. This is just what's going on. This is how it has to be. So don't let pride get in your way. Is kind of like saying that don't let yourself get kind of like an ego or a sense of entitlement to a certain situation or a certain person because that's kind of what pulls you into the sticky situation that you're that you eventually are going to need to be removed from and with judgment in reverse it's just saying that it might be better to instead of following your own path forward in certain search of these situations with king of swords here too this is indicating interestingly enough with um this guy and these birds all around him. He has an owl there, a bat there, a raven there, and an insect. They're all flying creatures. This is indicating that you really are created or surround yourself with good people and good friends. Really this things floating in the water towards you, like I mentioned in the uh, metaphor, the analogy earlier, is um, the fact that like this more has to do with like love interests, you know, but the thing is, is your person, your future, your, your spouse or soulmate, who's going to end up in your life forever. They're going to be very similar to a lot of friends you have. You look at this guy, he's surrounded by these birds and you can think of this as you, and you can think of this judgment card as kind of like an uh, indication that it's better to listen to your friend's judgment and the people around you that are consistent, that kind of fly away and come back, that are always kind of there. Anyone who kind of is always there and sticks to you, it's better to listen to their judgment about some of these people that come in. And it's, it's interesting. It's just kind of like you have to accept that like, not everyone who comes into your sphere is the best person for you or is going to remain in your sphere for a while. Remember, these people are going to drift in and out around you. And it's almost about knowing that like, if you really want to listen to like, get a more sense of perspective on who's going to stay and who's going to go, you can listen to your friends. You can listen to your friends because they're going to have a very similar perspective to your future person in the long run. And then with don't let pride get in your way, this is just basically don't make something, don't try to make something work that's not going to work just because you uh, have a sense of pride about it, right? Really releasing your ego is really important here. And that's kind of tied in with this as well. Releasing your ego and kind of becoming like, you're becoming the center of your universe, but you're releasing your attachment to things, your ego and your attachment to different things. And what we have here with the things flying away or sailing away, it's this element of like letting things go, letting things go and not having a sense of pride and trying to hold on to them too much. 
Yeah, I'm definitely seeing something, just a fun fact is that you're really gonna have a really good time with um, your your future spouse, your person and your friends. I can see them really getting along, you know, with the singing the same song and then being social. A lot of your friends that you have are really gonna enjoy their kind of like social abilities, but it's interesting. They're gonna be very much like your friends, like kind of social fly around um, kind of type people, but they're gonna have their own unique perspective and ideas that's gonna really is what's gonna draw you in on a romantic level to this person. So yeah, very, very cool. I think that about covers it for that reading. So if you like the reading, you can like or comment below. If you really like that reading, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. I post picket cards like this once every one to two weeks. With that said, we're gonna, well, that, oh, so that was the last reading. So I will bid you guys adieu. Thank you for letting me read for you. See you in the next picket card. Bye.